with European Astrofest 2025, uh, and Hello. I'm here with uh, with Grant, Grant. Yep. from uh, First Light Optics, and you have this absolute monstrosity of a beast <laughs> with us here. Can you the, the Terminator? The Terminator. Yeah. What are we What are we looking at? So we we wanted something that people wouldn't have seen before. Yeah. So um, uh, my instructions to the guys was I wanted something that looked mean and eye catching. Yeah. So uh, we had a few bits of this already, but we decided to put it all together and make this this huge beast. So what we've got here is um, some some bits people won't have seen before. Uh, we've got a Shibumi pier, which is a canted pier. Yeah. Um, it's a really heavy duty pier that's um, very carefully designed to reduce vibrations and harmonics. But the key thing about it is it's canted, so it's designed for specific latitudes. Um, so what it means is you don't have to pier flip, which if you're an astrophotographer, pier flipping is a pain in the backside. With this, you can just keep imaging all the way through. So um, you, don't the, the, you don't have to do a meridian flip. You don't have flip. to do a meridian flip. Yeah. Yeah. No meridian flip. So but it means that's the key. pier, you have to have it for your there's some adjustment there's a little bit okay. of adjustment but basically these piers are made per site per so they're site. bespoke okay. made you can get them in any color uh, we quite like this kind of dark dark gray um, yep. there's cable management through the pier and on the top of this pier is a is a customized a very heavily customized skywatcher eq8 so skywatcher eq8 is an observatory class 50 kilo payload mount from skywatcher very reasonably priced mount for its its capacity and its quality um, but this has been customized to turn it so it has dual axis so yeah. rather than having a counterweight at one end it's tilted on its side and you've, we've got side by side set up um, it's also had replacement worm and wheels so it's upgraded parts inside which improves the accuracy improves the mechanics improves the tracking and these really really cool saddles which are sprung loaded so again this is a very unique design um, really holds large instruments really so you well end up with something that's kind of the midway between a azimuth and a German equatorial. Exactly, exactly that. So it means you don't have the meridian flip, but it, but you have got that. Um, you've got that huge payload. Um, I mean, the EQA is a fantastic platform, tried and tested. The SIN scan, all of that works really well. Yeah. And then Shibumi then really go to town with the engineering and bring it up to a much higher level. But it's still much cheaper than starting with something like a, a very very high end mount. It's, you end up with a something with yes. a, a much larger payload, much better tracking without spending 20, 30,000 pounds. So it's, it's actually, whilst it's expensive, obviously, big stuff is always expensive. Okay. It's not as expensive as other options to achieve this level of payload and this level of tracking accuracy. So it really, with the Shibumi engineering, it really takes the EQ8 to sort of the best possible it could be within an EQ8 platform. Yep. So it's pretty remarkable. And then we've got on here, we've got four 10 inch RC telescopes, which are our Stellar Lyra brand. Um, so these are uh, off the top of my head, F7, F8 instruments. Um, most people would just use one at a time and they're great for astrophotography. They do a really good job. Um, but here we've got four. The idea being that, you know, you might want to do LRGB or it's simultaneously. You might want to do narrowband and luminance simultaneously. Um, in reality, if you were doing this in an actual observatory, we would have some additional hardware to allow you to make sure all four telescopes are pointed completely in parallel with each other. Yeah, yeah. So that we'd have some additional hardware. But for the sake of the show, we just so wanted something to that get looks the cool. same field. That's exactly that. Because um, ideally, you want the fields to be as close as possible. So we sell some additional saddles that let you very accurately change the camber and the tilt and yep, you know yep, the yaw sense. of the that telescope yep. so you get them all pointing perfectly we've got some other cool stuff i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but on the back here got a uh, starlight express um uh, focuser aog unit um so this is where it will automatically be um adjusting the optics to take into account the seeing and the guiding rather than having to keep moving the mount you can do that on the on the back of the uh, the scope. Then we've got um, one of them, their new Starmos cameras, a big giant field to wheel and a, and a load star. This is just for example. We've also got this very cool little control box, which people may not have heard of. It's called a star box. And the idea being it's a, it's a kit that you can add your own Raspberry Pi to and turn it into a little mini um, imaging computer. So it comes without the Pi. So we, we don't supply it, but it comes as a kit and it's the enclosure and it's the hat. So the clever bit is the hat that goes on top of the Pi that gives you the power output controls. What it means is you give it 12 volt in and then it, you can then have uh, outgoing power to all your peripherals. I see. You plug your USB into the, the USB. You've got dew heater outputs here as well. And then it's got software that will run in Indian ECOS to control those power outputs. So if you're looking for um, a, a, an alternative to Windows imaging machine 
And if you're looking for an alternative to something like the ASI Air, this is based on open source software and is a bit, little bit more, if you're a bit more of a tinkerer and like yeah, fiddling yeah, yeah. with things, this is, this is a really good option. Like you do your own thing. Uh, exactly that. And it means you've got the option of what- You can always level access to. Exactly because, that. Yeah, so yeah. you choose the iOS that you put on it. I'm using Stellamate OS, which is, yeah. um, it's not free, it's a licensed product from Stellamate. But what it means is they've pre-configured a lot of the stuff for you. They've, re they've installed Indian ECOS, they've added their own additional layers to the top of it. They've got some really clever AI tools where you can, rather than programming your sequence, you tell a little kind of chatbot, I want to image M31 when it's above 30 degrees, I want 10 luminance, 10 R, you know, 10 red, 10 green, 10 blue. Uh, and I don't want to image on a full moon and you just tell it what you want and it creates a sequence for you based on your sort of written instructions, if you yeah, like. Yeah, okay. So they've got some very cool little AI stuff come in. Um, but also the Stellamate OS is regularly updated. So again, you don't have to worry so much about updates and new features and all that kind of stuff. It, it manages all that for you. So you have to be a little bit more computer literate. You know, you have to be willing to put a bit more time into to the software side and there's a little bit of a learning curve, but there's a lot more flexibility on what you can then do with it and, and how much access you have. The other thing is it's, it's platform, uh, it's manufacturer agnostic and there's drivers for like every camera you can imagine, yeah, every yeah. mount so you, you can, can imagine, every buy. filter wheel. Yeah, yeah, so you can you can mix and match your hardware. You might already have soft, you know, cameras you want to use with it and things like that. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility. You just plug it in. Really like the idea of it basically just being an enclosure where you bring your own hardware. Yeah. Because that also means if you in the future need more compute yes. power. Yeah, yeah, exactly you, that. Assuming the hats are still compatible yeah, in the yeah. future, that's of course Well, this the caveat, is the thing, I mean, um, the Raspberry Pi 5 comes in four, eight and 16 gigabyte variants. Yeah. We recommend the eight gig is plenty for deep sky imaging because deep yeah. sky imaging isn't that image inten uh, resource intensive when you're actually capturing. You wouldn't generally do your processing on these. Generally, you would use this for capture, then you'd move your data and process it on a, uh, on a different unit. Mm. Um, so eight gig is plenty, but you might want 16 gig. You might be trying to do something a little bit different and need a bit more power. Great. Yeah. Um, the main thing as well, Raspberry Pi is very, uh, very energy efficient. So again, if you've got a mobile rig and you're running off a battery as this is here, you know, this will last a good a good while. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's very, it's very, very power. low power. No, because I know there are some people that like to go and have their on telescope computer do their um, bias docs, flat yes, subtractions yeah, or yeah, calibration yeah. basically, so that when they come out to their telescope in the morning, yeah. they have pre-calibrated frames oh, okay. already. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because I know that some of the things that people have been talking about with uh, with some of the other products is that that they really like to have that option, so you don't have to do it to save yeah, that time when they yeah. come home, so they have a yeah. quicker route to... Uh, well, again, I guess the beauty is but because you, Indian ECOS is open source, if any functionality isn't there, you know, yeah, you can make it yourself. If you're a developer, you can make it yourself. Yeah. Or even if you're not a developer, you know, going on the forums and suggesting features and asking for features, the more people that ask for them, yeah. the more likely another developer can say, oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah, we'll, we'll build that in. Uh, and I think Indian Ecos and, and, and things like Nina as well, you know, they are developing so quickly these days because yeah. of the community and because of the, the time developers give to these tiny kind of projects. I, I think it is a bit of a golden age in, in the software we have available. It's not just the control software, it's things like SharpCap and, you know, there's loads of software that is just fantastic software that people give away for free and it really really helps us astronomers you know do the things we want to do so it's, it is a golden age um, but yeah check out our star box and uh if you're at astrofest come and come and say hello to the beast and uh awesome. thank thanks a lot thank you for, very much uh, showcasing thank this. you pleasure Absolute have a good pleasure. Uh, expo thank you thank you